Hey guys, welcome to another video. This is the third episode or third video of the 2JZ IS300 conversion. So I'm just gonna clear all the other projects, all the other cars. I've got a one of mine, that's the next video. Then we've got this IS300, we're doing the same thing on this. So this one's a bit of a special one, it's got a turbo. I'm gonna change into my working clothes. We're gonna be doing some wiring. I've got some black and red wires to join or green ones, I'm not entirely sure. I've uh, got some limited tools, unfortunately everything's due to this virus, it's locked up at my other place of work, but hoping it's going to be all good. So let's get changed and let's get started. Now we're going to put the manual gearbox into the, not that one, into the car out there. Before we get too into it, I wanted to ask you for two minutes of your time to check out some of the links below. We've got a Drifting, which is my brand here. All the profits directly supports the, the, the both channels I've got, one in the Czech language, one in the English and as well as link to directly support financially uh, so we can you know make some cool projects buy some parts but in today's video we are going to modify the wiring which is i believe this plug here and obviously putting all all back together but we're going to start with the wiring and that is connecting two wires which will allow the car to start so sort of trick the automatic ecu thinking it's in park or neutral and then the reverse light switch as well but let's uh, start with the wiring on the right hand side of the gearbox we've got the reverse light switch which we're going to cut and we're going to crimp some connectors on it so it's uh, serviceable so if we do have to remove the gearbox we can just unplug it uh, the other the other sort of connector we're just going to solder together because there's no need check the wiring and as i said on this side black and black and white for starting the car tricking the ecu and on this side it's not the green wires it's actually the red ones you can just about make them out so we're going to cut them off take this conduit off so we can uh, solder it crimp in and do whatever All the wiring done and soldered and weatherproofed all holding good even with the normal pliers now we're just gonna put the fly wheel on and the spigot bearing and i think that might be it yeah clutch and the gearbox on Bearing in nice and careful, don't hammer it in, just gently tap it nice and flush with the end of the crankshaft and now we can put the flywheel on. Ideally you want to lock up the flywheel with the locking tool and torque up these bolts with a torque wrench. Unfortunately as I mentioned my one's locked away so I can't do that. But I've got plenty of experience of putting new flywheels on so I'm sure this is absolutely fine. So we just need to clean up the surface on the flywheel and the clutch and then put the clutch on.
I'm gonna align the clutch by eye. It wouldn't be the first time. So what you have to do with that at all is just do these uh, pressure plate bolts just sort of tight enough so the clutch is sort of snug so it doesn't fall down but it's also easy enough to move. Are you just gonna align it with the spigot bearing there? Easy enough, always works. Clutch in nice and straight, hopefully. And then we're gonna drop the hydraulic line in from the top. This is listed as a Supra, but all the cars from the 90s, from Toyota and the sort of early noughties, exactly the same. So I just got the ladder ready, drop it through there, and then we can put the gearbox in. I can't think of anything else other than installing the transmission. So we've checked out the front of the engine again to sort of put it in a better angle and then just put the transmission on the hydraulic jack and install it. So I'm not gonna lie, it was a bit of a mission. The adapter is quite big and bulky, so I was struggling, especially with the exhaust left. So next time, if that's something I'm gonna do, I'm hoping to do a bit more of these. Uh, something I'm gonna remove just to make my life a little bit easier, I think. So two things worth mentioning, the 17 mil bolts, the big bulky ones, they were too long, so I was sort of hunting for some bolts. And I've managed to find uh, old caliper carrier bolts from my JZX. So I use those because it's a Japanese fine thread, so just bear that in mind and some of the mounting holes for the manual and automatic are different so the manual ones were quite corroded because obviously they were not being used on this car so that's worth cleaning before you put the transmission in but now we're just gonna take the prop shaft put it in the car put the gearbox mount on sort out the wiring tidy it up so it's not hanging loose because there's quite a lot of sort of excessive wiring now the hydraulic, I haven't got anyone to help me bleed it, so I'm hoping it's just gonna gravity sort of bleed itself. And I think then fill it up with oil and then we're ready to start it and try. So uh, let's get on with it. Drive shaft is in, it's a bit of a hybrid. I did forget to mention this, that the front of the drive shaft is IS200 and the rear is IS300 because it does have a different diff. So it's a bit of a hybrid. It is balanced separately, the both shafts. So that's good news. Now I just put the mount on, secure the cables or the wiring. Obviously plug it in that switch and hydraulics. Fill it up with uh, oil. Yeah, that's it. Two more things underneath bleed the hydraulics. I'm just gonna crack the bleed nipple and fill it up and hope for the best. Trying to grow a bit to bleed it because I'm on my own. So, you know, obviously uh, liquid goes down, air goes up and whatnot. So uh, I'm just hoping that's gonna work. 
and over here we've got 24 mil to fill up uh, the gearbox with oil be careful the 8 mil if you remember from the first uh, episode of this little mini series don't touch the 8 mil it is this 24 that we're going to undo and then we're going to fill it up from the top
as you saw it's working fine just like manual should be working I, we don't need no emulator we just joined the wires or a manual ECU from the States so it's working as it should which is great so I've got a list here how much this old fan has cost obviously I'm not gonna count labor because of most of you guys I'm sure will be making it yourself so I've got a gearbox and prop shaft which can be picked up for hundred pounds then I've got clutch and flywheel for 300 then we have the conversion kit from Ireland which is 400 pounds then if you watch carefully all three videos you've noticed I haven't done the pedals uh, reason being the car came as a project with pedals already installed so I'm sorry about that but you just have to find somewhere else and pedals with lines I believe they can be sourced for about 100 pounds and then I've got 100 pounds allocated for consumables like the oil the flywheel bolts the clutch cover bolts so the total is £1,000 which I don't think is bad for a manual JZ conversion and many say it's actually better than the weaker W58 gearbox plus you have a 6 speed uh, plenty of spares out there so I think it's a great solution it seems to be working great I can tell you uh, later on you know if it's lasting if it's all good but yeah thank you for watching uh, thank you for checking the uh, description uh, sorry the video the links in the description and I will see you next time. Bye.